Joining us now, she's a multi-time All-American at a brilliant career. Of course, started at Purdue, of course, ended at Oklahoma State, helped them get to the Women's College World Series, was now playing professionally. She's now doing commentating. She's doing a little bit of everything. I speak of Rachel Becker, who uh, we've, yeah. become, we've become friends all of a sudden here between our multi-connections here, joining us on In the Circle on D1 Softball. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Let's first talk about you're commentating. This is your first year doing commentary. Uh, what's it been like? And just tell us a little bit how that you got involved in the commentary here and what's it been like so far for you? It's been fun. It's obviously a lot different than being on the field. So I'm still trying to make that adjustment from, you know, being so wrapped up in college athletics for the past five years now, and then all of a sudden being done with that. So I think it kind of just fell into my lap the opportunity they were looking for someone to do the color for this season and I think coach G was just like oh like we have a former player here you know IGA with Oklahoma soft or Oklahoma State softball so um not really too much going on for me during the game so kind of just a great opportunity to give some insight on more of the culture of Oklahoma State softball and then having just played for five years I'm pretty you know, I like, I guess I'm good to speak on what's happening during the game and all that. So it's a little bit more work than I anticipated when the opportunity first came about. I didn't expect to have to prepare so much, but it's been interesting and it's been a lot of fun. What do you think you've learned so far? I don't know how many games you've done. Obviously, I got to focus on you this week and you were doing the UCF Oklahoma State Series, which we'll talk about. But You've done now a couple, you know, handful of games. What have you thought? What's been the, what have you learned so far? I've learned, I think just, it's been really interesting for me to think about the game more from a coaching perspective now, because, you know, this whole season I've been sort of on the staff with Oklahoma State softball. So seeing their perspective and then what, when you're watching the game, knowing kind of, oh, I wonder if the coach is going to like steal in this situation or, um, oh, it seems like the pitcher is kind of following this pattern. So let's see if they keep doing that. And like, you're kind of thinking about that stuff during the game, but when I'm watching it and trying to pick up on those patterns and things that are happening and, you know, stuff like that, I think that has been a really interesting part for me to just try to think of it more from the coaching perspective and when to make a change and all that stuff which is not something I really thought about as a player. Is it something that has, do you still get the adrenaline rush you did as a player? Has it helped at least replace some of that being in the booth for a game? Maybe a little bit. I think in the booth, it's also hard for me because I'm up there really trying not to react to situations because something so good will happen and I'll be so happy, but I can't, like, obviously I can't like cheer into the microphone or anything like that. And try to be as consistent as possible to both sides. So definitely still get that adrenaline rush when the games are tight and it's uh it's an interesting game, but I don't know. It's it nothing really compares to being on the field. Yeah. Right? And like being surrounded by the fans and all that. I don't think anything can really compare to that. No, it is but it is another option if you don't want to get into coaching. That's more and more we're seeing former players getting in into broadcasting. Tell the audience what else you've been up to other than broadcasting uh, going on as far as playing and as far as what what's life after Oklahoma State for you. Yeah, so after I uh, finished up the season last year, I signed with Athletes Unlimited and played uh, for them over the summer. And then I was going to come back to Oklahoma State to be a grad assistant. I'm getting my MBA right now. So still working towards that and going to graduate in May and hoping again to play with AU and also doing some stuff with the USA, like national team camp and all that going to that this summer. So still, still trying to play after that. I really have no idea what I'm going to be doing. I do like broadcasting. So I kind of want to see where that takes me and if there's further opportunities available, but yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just going to see how the season goes over the summer. Describe the experience at Athletes Unlimited. It's it's such a fun time. I thought it was like 
showing up that first day and walking into orientation and being surrounded by 60 of the best softball players that I grew up watching my entire life, my entire career, just admiring and just wanting to be them and then seeing them and getting to play on the field next to them. Like I remember the first scrimmage I was playing up the middle with Sis Bates and I was like, this is unreal. I can't even believe this. I have admired her my whole career. So it was awesome. It was really cool. It's a really fun environment. Everyone that I met there was so nice. Um, and just, I think the coolest thing about AU is the people. So that was the part I enjoyed the most, I would say. Sounds like you still want to do it. You still want to play professionally, internationally, whatever for a while. Is that accurate? Yes, a hundred percent. I've been training super hard this whole time that I've been back at school, I've been working with our strength coach and, um, you know, just hitting as much as I can and trying to stay in good shape because I do really want to keep playing as long as I can, as long as my body um, will let me. And I feel pretty good so far. So that's the goal. Does the fact that the softball is back in the Olympics in Los Angeles 28, does that play a factor in the back of your mind too? I mean, that would be honestly like a dream come true to be able to, you know, shoot for that and compete in that. I know that's something that is very difficult to, you know, get to that level, but I mean, yeah, definitely a little motivation in, you know, the back of my mind. Like I definitely just, I want to keep playing because I love softball and I love the game and I don't feel done yet. And if my career takes me all the way up until that point, then I would love that. That'd be amazing. Well, in the meantime, you got certainly a lot to look forward to right now, but I want to kind of look back. Uh, you played at Purdue, where's one of two Boilermakers ever to become an All-American. That is an amazing accomplishment to begin with. A great career at Purdue. You go as a grad transfer at Oklahoma State. You become an All-American there. You get to the World Series. Not many could say that, that they've been All-American in two different places, back-to-back -back years. First of all, how did you get into softball? Well, my dad played baseball his whole growing up, his whole life. So I always, as a little kid, I always kind of wanted to be like my dad. Like I was a little tomboy. I wanted to always, you know, go outside and play catch and like hit the ball and whatever and all that. So I think I just fell in love with it at, a, at an early age because my dad was so involved with baseball when he was growing up. So it was really easy for him to want to play with me and help me teach me how to hit and like do everything like that. So I don't know. I've always loved softball so much. You ended up going to Purdue. Uh, why Purdue? What, what, is, how did you end up at Purdue? And obviously you had a great career and then end up after you got your degree and everything, you decided to go to Oklahoma state as a grad student. Yeah. So I wasn't super highly recruited out of travel ball or anything like that. I played for a smaller travel ball team. Like all of our kids were within an hour, I would say of the place where the travel team was actually located, which I don't think you see very much this these days. Um, so Purdue was one of my only options, which I was super happy with. I kind of grew up wanting to play in the Big Ten. Those were the teams that I had been around. I grew up in like Chicago area. So it's kind of like the center of the Big Ten, which was awesome that I kind of achieved that goal. But yeah, Purdue's a great school academically and um I went on a visit there and really just fell in love with the campus and the culture of the, the school and the program and all that. And it kind of, it kind of seemed like a really good fit for me. And yeah, I mean, I love Purdue. I love my experience there. I had an amazing time. And so leading into the decision to transfer, um, you know, we got that extra COVID yep. year. So with that, I kind of was like, all right, I kind of want to just try to get on a team that has a shot at going to the world series. And, you know, I just wanted to take my game up another level and try to help out another team that is competing at a higher level. And you did that with Oklahoma state. You got to the world series. What was it like to play at OKC at the college world series? It was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Honestly, I still remember that first game we played Florida State and we were away. So I was coming up to bat and 
there's like with the TV time and all that, there's kind of like a couple of minutes of a break and stuff. And I, before the game starts and I just remember like looking around and seeing all the fans and I was just like, this is unreal that I'm here right now and how loud it was in there. I was just like almost in awe. Like I couldn't believe that my career had taken me to that point and just getting to see all the fans and What's really cool, too, is all the media attention and, you know, just having that experience. It was just unlike any anything I'd ever experienced before. So super awesome. And that was my goal kind of in the beginning of the season when I got to Oklahoma State. I was like, I want to play in the World Series like you guys have done it three years in a row and I want to help this team get there. So a really good feeling. And you became a fan favorite right away. Like you fit in, like, even though you were there for a year, it seems like you played there longer. That's how much they re- coach guy asking when he's talked about you and the fans about you do you did you feel that from that standpoint because like I said you were there for a year but people embraced you like you were there for four or five years with the rest of that senior class you left with yeah I definitely felt that and I I really loved you know getting that reaction from the fan base because Oklahoma State softball does have such a good fan base and you know they care so much about the player so to come in and you know, take on a new role on the team. And, you know, they never know what to think when new players, new transfers come in. So to see how much, you know, they really accepted me into the program. I just think it just speaks to how awesome the fans are that we have and just how amazing Coach G is at bringing in transfers and just, you know, embedding them into the program. It's, it was awesome. You were described at one point during your career as maybe one of the best hitters in the country if not the best hitter in the country, you're always in the mix there, a high batting average, everything like that. Some consider you the best leadoff hitter when you hit leadoff in the sport. How would you describe, now that you're an analyst, I'm curious, how would Rachel Becker, the analyst, describe Rachel Becker, the player? Hmm. I think I would say probably that if I was analyzing myself, that I do a good job getting on base and starting off the the innings and stuff, starting off the game, uh, kind of getting the offense going. I see a lot of pitches, which is good for, you know, the rest of the team, especially as a leadoff hitter. That's what I've always said. Like I, I've always said that I love hitting leadoff because not only do I have like the typical stats of a leadoff hitter, you know, you mentioned like high average, high on base percentage, stuff like that. But I don't know. I've just, I just always loved that spot in that role and being the one that kind of starts off the inning. So probably something like that. I don't know. Well, what's the key to being a successful leadoff hitter? Just doing whatever it takes, I would say, to get on base. Um, that's make the pitchers the, work too, right? Like it'll work a lot of pitches. Work, transfer the information that, you know, you're getting and help the rest of your team. But I really think a leadoff hitter is someone that is just so competitive at the plate as well. And, you know, you can, like in my case, I can bunt, I can hit for power. Sometimes I can shoot gaps. Like a lot of my hits last year were like just little singles, little bloop singles, you know what I mean? Just finding a way to get on. I think that's the most important part and getting the offense going. Let's talk about the current Cowgirls, because there were a lot of questions going into the season with the players that left, that graduated, including you. Uh, I, I was one of them. Heck, Kenny Gajewski was one of them, because I had him on before the season, and he, you know, you know how Kenny is. He's pretty honest. He's like, I don't know. We're very young here. I don't know what we're going to look like defensively. I don't know what we're going to look like offensively. I don't know if he was playing gamesmanship with me, or maybe he's just as surprised. But they have been tremendous, this young group. How have they maybe answered some critics here? Because there are a lot of people thought they would take a step back in part because of losing players like you and, and some of the player other departures, graduation, et cetera. What has jumped out to you seeing this team this year? Absolutely. I think the freshmen and underclassmen have stepped up more than anyone could have predicted. Like I was in the same boat with you with you know, so many of our veteran players graduating and moving on, you just never knew what this year was going to bring. A lot of people thought maybe it was going to be a rebuilding year, but, um, you know, we still have Lexi Kilfoyle to 
kind of be that leader in the circle. And then I think they one of the stats that popped up in the game today or yesterday was that six out of seven of the like top average hitters on the Oklahoma State team right now are underclassmen. So wow. Yeah. I know. I was just blown away by that because a lot of those girls were, you know, on the bench waiting to get their opportunities last year. And so now that they are the ones in those big moments and they're just stepping up and doing exactly what they need to be doing for the team to be successful is so awesome to watch. And I think it just shows how bright the future is for Oklahoma State softball and just shows how good of a recruiter that Coach G is and how good they are at developing the players that they already have to be so good at a young age. Oh, and, I, and that's a good point you bring up there, because I think there is a perception there that Kenny was like, well, he's one that depends on the transfer portal, right? Like, he's got a lot of players from the portal. But we're seeing with this particular roster, yes, he added a couple pieces, but this is a part of his, his highly touted freshman class, for example. Like, Carly Godwin is unbelievable. She was a top 10 player rated coming out of high school, and we're seeing why. And you mentioned it, some of the players that maybe didn't get the opportunities, they're developing. Just talk about Coach Gajewski. What's a misconception that, or, or something that people don't know about Coach Gajewski that you think people should realize about him as a coach? Hmm. Coach G is just, he's so, he makes it so easy, I think, to play for him because he's one of the most positive and encouraging coaches that I've ever come across in my entire softball career. Um, so I think like we were talking about with these freshmen, he just kind of encourages us to like go out and play like, and that is what is so cool about the freshman class. Like I've heard him say before that these freshmen don't really know what to expect coming into these games. Like they're not like, Oh, big 12 conference, whatever. This is going to be a hard series. You know what I mean? They just, just go out there and play and that's one of his big things is he's always like picture like you're playing t-ball in the backyard with your friends when you were a kid like you're gonna go up there and you're gonna swing the bat that hard and so he really just encourages the players to be themselves and to just go out and have fun I think that's one of the things that you might not always see on tv and stuff like that but he's just a great all-around coach Pitching Lexi Kilfoyle has been magnificent this year, obviously having an All-American type of year. Uh, but to tell me about the rest of the staff, because obviously the big question was, you lose Kelly Maxwell, she transfers, what's going to happen? Well, Kilfoyle steps up to number one, but what about behind her? We've seen Ivy Rosenberry, Kyra Icock, uh, Kyra, uh, you got Catherine Ah. Just tell me about the rest of the staff and how they've stepped up with an ERA of 1.6 as a staff. Yeah, I think the pitching staff was definitely a big concern for – a lot of people coming into the season, you know, with Kelly leaving and all that and really not getting a big transfer in for the pitching staff or anything. But um, I think Carrie Eberly has just done such a good job developing Ivy Rosenberry because she came in last year uh, from Virginia Tech. And I think everyone knew that she had potential and she could throw the ball hard and, you know, we, we were all like, Ivy, like, you're good, but it just, like, wasn't cutting it in the games last year. You know what I mean? But this year, she has just worked so hard in the offseason and gotten so much better and so much more confident with her stuff. And same with Kyra Acock. She had a really good freshman year. So kind of just trying to build off that and just get even better. And I think Carrie Eberly has been a really good change for – the staff and everyone, all the pitchers are getting along super well working with her. She's doing a great job. Like I would say managing the games, calling the games, obviously our pitching staff has been amazing so far. So, I mean, all good things. I would say the staff is, we're really lucky to have three of the best in the big 12 on our team. And their offense, again, you lost so much personnel offensively yet. You're one of the best, again, hitting 330-plus as a team. You're scoring runs. You're top 50 in the country in runs scored. 
What have you seen from this offense? The why is it excel so well? I know Vanessa Shippey is the hitting coach there. Uh, coach Gajewski talking about her and her value to that. But what has jumped out to you from this offensive team uh, that's been so successful to this point? You mentioned players like, Carol, for example, Claire Tim didn't get a lot of playing time last year. Boy, she's gotten it. She's taking advantage of it this year. A transfer like Caroline Wong from Liberty is having a big year. Carly Godwin, the they're getting it from a lot of pieces here. Yeah, like I think – like you mentioned with coach Shippey kind of taking over another good change, I think for the program, just, you know, a, a different perspective that she brings and, you know, some of those players like Claire Tim and Katie law people last year that were not getting those opportunities. They were still working so hard every single day in the cages, hitting extra, you know, getting their reps in to be ready for this year. And, I just think that's the main thing with this offense is they work so hard. There's always people in the cages hitting every single time I go up there, there's someone hitting and coach Shippey works with them so well and gets them prepared for every pitcher that they're going to face that weekend. So I think those are some of the biggest things is just the work ethic is just amazing. Describe, because you you got to play in the Big 12, describe what's it like playing in the Big 12? Because obviously UCF, who is Oklahoma State's opponent this weekend, they're in their first year in the Big 12, as is BYU, as is Houston. What advice would you give them as far as playing in the first year in the Big 12 that people may not realize about playing in the Big 12? Hmm, I would say it's going to be super competitive. Everyone knows that. The Big 12, like we talked about, a few days ago is so good this year, top to bottom. Um, so really just knowing that every day you show up to the field, there are there's no such thing as an easy day and there's no team that you can take lightly. So just really showing up with the mindset to attack every day and you can't expect to win every game because that is just nearly impossible, I would say. Um, because these teams are so good and they're so scrappy and everybody is so coming into these games so prepared. So I don't know, just competing. I think every pitch is the biggest thing. Well, and what's amazing is Oklahoma is Oklahoma. Obviously, they speak for themselves. Texas looks even better this year with their offense than they have even the last couple of years uh, there. What I don't know how much of them have you been able to watch or the other teams in the league. Kansas comes off with a big sweep of Baylor at home. Big, big for Jennifer McFalls and the Jayhawks. What has stood out to you seeing the other teams in the Big 12? I think, I think it's awesome to see so many teams in the Big 12 just elevating. Like the whole conference is elevating together. And I know obviously Oklahoma has been amazing these past few years, Texas, another team that's been so good and we're losing them, which is going to be different, but um, it's just so cool to see a team like Kansas too, who last year they ended up beating us in that big 12 tournament at the end of the year. So it's like, we could already see that, you know, they were growing and getting better every single game. So I just think that, the conference is so much fun to play in. It's, it's unlike, like I used to play in the big 10 and it was just so different playing in the big 10 because we didn't even get to play every other team that was in the conference. Whereas like in the big 12, you get to play everybody. So I thought that was one of the coolest parts, but yeah, it's just awesome to see it. Also awesome to see for postseason as well, like looking towards seating and hosting and all that in the world series and, yeah, I don't know. It's exciting. Well, that's a great point you make up because you played in the Big Ten, Big Twelve. You noticed the difference, didn't you? Just from a, a yeah. just a caliber, right? What is it? What 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 was it that you think? Was it just talent level? Was it just depth? What was it? Talent level for sure. I think the the pitchers in the Big Twelve are just another level up. It's it's hard to describe it other than just another level up, and there are so many more people on the pitching staff so many more options like you said there's a lot more depth um I just think the Big Ten was it was it was competitive for my team um you know I was at Purdue we were ever even in the top half of the Big Ten so that was kind of tough um but I think also in the Big Ten going into each weekend you kind of knew what was going to happen you knew that Northwestern was going to sweep 
like Purdue, for example, or you knew that Michigan was going to sweep like Wisconsin or something. You know what I mean? You could tell which teams were going to win and which teams are going to be at the top every single year. And you could say that about the Big 12 with Oklahoma. But I think throughout the conference, it's literally you never know whose game it is because these teams are all so good and so scrappy. So that's another thing I think that just sets them apart. Well, even your team last year kind of showed that. You you know, a lot of people were kind of like, whoa, Oklahoma State struggling down the stretch last year, but really weren't giving credit. Like you mentioned, Kansas was, you know, capable with Casey Hamilton, the great pitcher they got. Iowa State was played well. And you and it showed when you got to host the regional, you won your region, you won the Supers. Hey, there wasn't really anything wrong. Maybe you weren't playing at your level, but, oh, by the way, you're going to take your lumps in the Big 12. There are going to be peaks and valleys in the Big 12, isn't there? Yeah, for sure. Like last year, we got swept by Texas. I'm sure that was a surprise for a lot of people. It was a surprise for us. Um, but yeah, we're already seeing that too this year with, you know, Houston taking a game from Texas when they were number one, I think at that time. Um, so, yeah. and then today, or yeah, with Kansas beating Baylor. Sweeping Baylor, teams, yeah. Yeah, like that was honestly a big surprise to me as well. So yeah, definitely seeing some things getting mixed up, which is fun to see. Yeah, I think the league's number two RPI in the sport, and it's very deep and strong there. So we'll see how that, that plays out. What's going to be the keys? For, what do you want to see from Oklahoma State moving forward? Do you think it's going to be a key in determining how far they can go this year? I think one of the biggest things that I would like to see is the offense making adjustments quicker. I think we saw with uh, a couple of the conference games that we had against Baylor, and I would say even Friday against UCF, it was only a couple of runs that we could scratch across because the other pitchers were holding us down for so long and we weren't able to make an adjustment. You know what I'm saying? So like it was, we had a lot of trouble with the change up, you know? And so it shouldn't have taken, I would say, two games to adjust to that and to really start squaring those balls up. So I think if this offense is able to consistently put up five to six runs a game, our pitching staff is good enough to hold the other teams off. So I guess just a little bit more of a quicker adjustment at the plate. Easier said than done with some of the pitchers. I mean, you see Baylor has the great pitchers with Benford and uh, Crandall, Sarah Willis, you saw with UCF, you're going to see Casey Hamilton with Kansas etc uh but you know what's impressed me about oklahoma state too is they win the late innings and that was kind of the key difference this in this series it was 4-4 in saturday's game they scored six in the six even sunday's game they added an insurance run to hold off a strappy ucf team there that's part of it too in the big 12 like the baylor series you won that series basically in the late innings that's uh one thing that i've jumped noticed about the big 12 is the late innings are not that they're not pivotal in other conferences, but they have really decided a lot of these games more than maybe I expected. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, that, you know, the biggest key maybe going forward is probably to just knock it down towards the end of the game because there were, I think in Baylor, we were like losing all three of those games and then ended up coming back in the end. So that's going to be a huge I think emphasis for the team going forward is even if you do get down, you can never give up because so far we've already seen how important the last few innings are. Even, you know, UCF, you're, they're coming back. It's six or it's five, four in the bottom of the sixth. So you can just never take your foot off the gas in this conference. Up to bottom. It's very deep, but it should be exciting. All right. Uh, so we can expect to see you in the commentary for most Oklahoma State home games this year, right? What's what's next for you, I guess? Is what Tell us what's ahead. You're doing commentary and then what? Yeah, so basically I'll just be doing the home games at Cowgirl Stadium, the ESPN Plus, and then the midweeks that we have at home. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. After that, hopefully going to play over this summer. Well, that's good. We enjoy watching you play as well. And shout out to Philip at the 1012 podcast. He got us uh, to meet each other there. You were, we were part of that, his podcast. He does a great weekly big 12 podcast 
of softball you got to uh, fill in and i'm like i'm just gonna steal her away for this uh, for this podcast because <laughs> I've been, I followed your career for a while. Uh, great to talk to you. Uh, I know we'll stay in touch. Good luck the rest of the year on the broadcast booth. It's always a lot of fun there. And uh, thanks for coming on and talking to us about your career, your playing career, and now as you do some broadcasting for us here on uh, In the Circle on D1 Softball. Yeah, thank you so much. This was awesome. It was really fun being on on here. So thank you.